Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to find a battery drain on your vehicle. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button and help promote my channel by sharing your favorite videos on your social media pages. So a battery drain, also known as a parasitic drain, is a load on your electrical system which shouldn't be there that will eventually dissipate the charge in your battery. This occurs when your vehicle is off and can take anywhere from a couple hours to over a week depending on the severity of the drain. For this I am using a 1998 Ford Ranger as an example. Depending on your vehicle you are working with, some vehicles such as this Ranger may have a peak load period. After a certain time, this could be anywhere from 10 minutes to 45 minutes where the computer will eventually go into sleep mode and the voltage draw will eventually drop. This is something which you'll need to consult with your vehicle's manufacturer specifications in order to determine if there is a drop off period and how long it'll take. In order to do a load test, you will need a multimeter, alligator clips, and a wrench or socket and ratchet to remove the negative battery terminal. This should be done on the negative side of the battery as it's safer because it reduces the chance of a short. Considering my alligator clips won't open wide enough to clip it on the battery terminal, while this may look a little awkward, I'm using locking pliers. Be extremely careful when using these, keep them away from the positive terminal and do not over tighten them where they may damage the battery post or battery. You can always use a quick grip clamp if you have one. A continuity test can be done across the battery post, through the pliers, and jumper wire to ensure there is no resistance which may affect the accuracy of your readings. Now to set up the multimeter, there should be an extra port to move the positive probe over to the amperage test. This one is rated at 10 amps, then set the amperage on the 10 amp setting. Connect the jumper wires to the test probes. One goes to the vehicle's negative battery terminal clamp and the other goes to the battery terminal. The multimeter needs to be installed in line, so as a series circuit. As you can see, we currently have a 1.68 to 1.7 amp draw. The next step in order to help find your problem is extremely important. Ensure all accessories are turned off in your vehicle, which can include anything from an ignition being on, radio, fan, and lights. For this case, the interior light is on in the truck, so once I close the door, the amperage automatically drops drastically, and we're looking at 0.26 amps. Unfortunately, there isn't an off switch for the interior light in this truck, and even if there was, there still may be a door ajar warning light on the dashboard. So in order to overcome this, either close the door, but considering I need to access the fuse panel, which is on the side of the dashboard, I need to trick the vehicle into thinking the door is closed. Doors will either have a switch around the door jam area. This can be on the hinged or latch portion. Other vehicles such as this truck will have a built-in switch in the latch assembly. Using a screwdriver, just flip the latch as if the door were closed. Do not close the door when the latch is closed. The force may damage or jam the latching assembly. Now we can source out the fault by pulling the fuses. Usually, there will be more than one fuse box in a vehicle. This can be found around the dashboard area, in the engine compartment, trunk, or under the seat. Starting with under the hood, for this truck we have one here, and then one within the dashboard. So pulling this one fuse here, you can see we do have a drop, but not nearly enough to put a large drain on the battery. Moving on to the interior of the vehicle, as mentioned before, the door needs to be open in order to access the fuse panel. Again, going through the fuses, pulling each one and watching the multimeter drop in value. The idea of pulling the fuse is that the fuse acts as somewhat of a switch, so once it's pulled, this deactivates the circuit. Once that fuse is removed, now we can see a large drop in amperage. In order to determine what the circuit controls, take the number from the fuse location. Some numbers may be printed on the fuse box assembly, such as this vehicle, which does make it easier or you'll have a diagram which references each fuse location. Pull out your vehicle's owner's manual, flipping over to the fuse section, determine what the circuit controls. So for the fuse in this dashboard, as you can see, we have a fuse amperage rating based on color, diagram stating the locations of the fuse, and a detailed list of what each fuse controls. This was number 25, which is for a generic electronic module and gauge cluster. Therefore, 
we have an issue with the gauge cluster or generic module. For the fuse under the hood, referencing the location for fuse number 4, this was controlling the circuit for the fog lights and daytime running lights. Considering this truck doesn't have fog lights, we may be looking at an issue with the daytime running lights module. As a generic troubleshooting method, in order to determine what the issue may be, you may have a stuck relay, faulty module, faulty switch, shorten the wiring, or perhaps something else. You will need to consult with a wiring diagram specific to your vehicle to determine what exactly the circuit controls and start unplugging specific controllers to see what removes the parasitic draw. You can even do an online search to determine if there is a common fault with your specific vehicle. Rangers are known for having a generic electronic module fail which is located behind the radio. Depending on the failing controller, these can sometimes be tested using a multimeter instead of wasting money on replacement items which isn't necessarily faulty such as a relay which I have a tutorial on on how to test. Newer vehicles, due to the larger amount of electronics, will have a larger acceptable parasitic draw value than compared to older vehicles. 75 milliamps or lower would be an acceptable value, but this will depend on your vehicle. A Cadillac with a larger amount of computers for audio, onboard computer, navigation, engine management equipment would have a larger value than compared to say a Ford Focus. A non-official sign of a large draw is when you remove the battery terminal, you'll see a large spark upon disconnection or connection such as shown here. New videos are being released every Monday and Friday. Be sure to stay up to date with my video schedule by hitting that notification bell on my channel homepage. Don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know what you think of my tutorial. Thank you for watching.